Hey guys, today I decided to go ahead and make a video about scoliosis. Um, I think it's very important for me to share the story because scoliosis is actually very common and a lot of people are kind of embarrassed about it and it's something to be proud of, to be honest with you. Um, I've never really shared my story before, so I figured why not help a few people out if I can. I'm going to start out by talking about what kind of scoliosis I have. And then I'm going to talk about kind of the thought process of it all and how I really figured out it was time to get surgery. And then, I guess, before and after surgery. So the kind I have is called adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, which means that you get it at a younger age. And whenever you go through your growth spurt, your curve tends to get much worse. Whenever I first went to the doctor at about 16 years old, I noticed that I had a little bit of a curve in my back. But the doctor was like, it's nothing big. Scoliosis is normal. It can run in your family. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to think anything of it then. I wasn't even there for that anyway. So whenever I got to college, we got x-rays done, and I realized I had gotten to about 25, 30 degrees. And the doctor said, you should probably keep an eye on this because it has gotten about 20 degrees worse. And whenever you do have this growth spurt, which sounds weird because a lot of people get it between the ages of 10 to 18, but since I went through puberty very late and grew very late, it happened to me throughout my college career. I went from literally 4'10", so a little child, to 5'2", by the time I graduated, which is insane. Whenever we got to the doctor, they said every six months I needed to get a checkup. And I was like, okay, this is interesting, but they said that we needed to watch the curve, make sure it didn't get any worse. And if it did, then it was just something maybe we needed to consider bracing or after gymnastics maybe I needed to get the surgery. It just kind of depended on where the curve went and the path that I guess God decided to take me on. A little bit to my senior year of high school I started to notice a little bit more back pain. It was like almost a pinched nerve feeling but I just figured it was nothing. I was getting old and well old but um, and gymnastics does it beats up your body so I just thought about not complaining and Honestly, I'm someone that has never complained about pain. So whenever I was little, I would crash and get up and be like, I'm okay, I'm okay. My coach thought it was the funniest thing ever. Throughout freshman year, I did notice, again, that my back pain was getting worse and worse. And I mentioned it once or twice, but being the hardhead that I am, I didn't want to miss any meets. I didn't want to miss practice. I didn't want to be considered a wimp, which is completely my thoughts. Like, nobody ever accused me of being a wimp, just to clarify. Um, but I did. I just wanted to push through it, and I figured if it was something, I would know. My body would tell me. So I just pushed through freshman year, and obviously it ended up very great because we ended up winning nationals for the first time. So go Sooners. About the summer before sophomore year, I noticed that my hips were starting to get like super uneven, and I did start to notice a little bit of a hump in my back on the right side which is actually very normal for this kind of scoliosis because you get curves and your spine starts to twist, which will make your back rib pop out more than the other side. So it's basically like this. So after I started to notice that my hips and back were starting to get uneven, I kind of got very insecure about it. And I'm not saying it's the sport. I'm not saying anything like that. I think it's just part of being a girl. You're insecure about your body and it's just something that you have to really work through and mentally get stronger about. As well as the curves happening, or me starting to notice things, I also was starting to become a woman, and things just started to look different. You know, you hold on to body fat different, you start to gain muscle easier, just your body changes, and it's hard to do kind of by yourself while you're in college. Um, I also had people mentioning my back and stuff more, so it made me even more insecure, because I was like, what? Do I look deformed? But... They would never say it out of mean intentions. It was more of like, Kim, you should get your back checked out rather than, oh my gosh, your back looks crazy. Uh, then going on to senior year, obviously the pain kept continuing to get worse and worse. And again, being stubborn didn't say anything. More of the story here, tell people when things are hurting because there's maybe something they can do about it. But I went on vacation the summer before my senior year and my mom was completely shocked to see how much my back curve had really changed over the past probably year because I grew. I grew four inches in a matter of probably two years. And like the definition of my scoliosis, whenever you grow, the curve does get much worse. So we really had a heart to heart and lots of tears shed. 
I had never broke down like that before in my life, I don't think. People that know me know I'm very emotional. I mean, <laughs> kidding. Uh, people that know me know I'm not emotional at all, so I don't really like to share things, but it was my mom. She was concerned. So it started to make me really feel concerned, too, because I knew something was wrong, but I was putting it in the back burner. My mom emailed our trainer and said that I really needed to get some x-rays and an MRI. And whenever I did that, I was completely shocked by the results. Like, the doctor even looking at me was like, there's no way it's gotten worse, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I really think it has because my body has changed a lot. And I was completely shocked when I saw it. It was I'm pretty sure it was about 63 degrees, which means that my back had gotten 33 degrees more curved and my biggest curve. And then there was also now starting to be a top curve and a bottom curve. And I just, I didn't know what to do. I called my mom, told her, she said, Ken's, we just need to really talk to your doctor, see what he says. He told me I could finish my gymnastics career. And that was something that I really wanted to do because I never wanted anyone to think I was trying to get out of the sport that I loved. I... Why would anyone want to stop their senior year? Like, I need to finish what I started. We already have two national championships out of the way. I want to win one more. I want to help my team in the best ways that I can, but maybe there's other things we can do to prevent pain a little bit. So after talking to my trainer, we did. We took out some conditioning exercises and just kind of tried to save my body the best we could. I did start telling her more whenever my back would hurt so that she could maybe rub me out just because the muscle – would get so tight on one side of my body that they'd have to, like, cut me and stuff. It was crazy. But ended up finishing the career very strong and healthy, which I'm so proud of. And by that time, I knew in the back of my mind, I need to get this surgery. Like I said, I knew it was time to get surgery. And I went home, met with a doctor named Dr. Geck. He is completely amazing. And if you have scoliosis, I highly recommend you go and see him. He has new technologies out that you can do robotic surgeries if you qualify for it. I did not because my curve was in different spots and the top curve that I had actually was too hard to move with the machine. Had I just had the middle curve, they probably could have done the surgery without having to completely cut me open, which look up the surgery. It's really cool, the um, less invasive one. But I also, after I met with Dr. Gack, he said, what do you want to do? And I said, I want my back to be straight. He said, all right, then the option is surgery, and I love doing surgery on your kind of back because he usually fixes a lot of infections or surgeries that are done overseas. They'll fly them to Dr. Yek to fix whatever mistakes they made, and he's so willing to do it. He's such a great guy, and I actually met so many people in Austin. They'd come up to me, and we'd start talking, and somehow my scoliosis would come up in conversation, and... The people knew, either knew people that had the surgery or they would have had the surgery themselves and they showed me like their scars and told me how much they loved Dr. Geck, which is even cooler because what are the chances that you get to meet people that have actually had surgery by your surgeon? I just knew that this was the perfect plan. God was showing me so many signs that you have to get this surgery. You're going to be okay. Like I have the perfect plan for you. Maybe it was to share my story. I don't know. But I think one of the main reasons I was so scared was because I have never had surgery in my life. So this was a five and a half hour surgery and I was terrified. I didn't want the tube going down my throat. I don't like being out of control. I like to know what my body's doing. I think that, I don't know, it was just very eye-opening and I really had to rely on God for this because it almost became my testimony. For surgery was getting closer, I had to do a lot of pre-op visits. I went to get physicals done. I got multiple x-rays, multiple, or not multiple MRIs. I got multiple x-rays, an MRI. I got blood work after blood work after blood work because they need to make sure that you are in superb um, shape before the surgery because they don't want the chance of any infections coming up. And like I said, he's very um, cautious with what he does. So even before surgery, like a week before I'd get in the shower, my mom would scrub my back for five minutes with this special soap they gave me. And I just was getting so nervous, but I knew this was the thing to do. The night before surgery, again, had another complete meltdown. I went and I was in the shower, my mom was washing my back, and I just started bawling. She's like, oh my gosh, Kenzie, what's wrong? And I literally went on the bed, I cried with her, 
And she said, Kenz, we don't have to do this. And I was like, Mom, but we do. Why would I run from my fear? Like, it's just something that you have to face your fears. And no matter what, I knew I had to get this surgery, whether it was today or a year from now. And honestly, the anxiety is much worse going into surgery than actually getting the surgery. So the morning of surgery came, and I was actually pretty peaceful. I just knew that everything was going to be okay. Got to the hospital and went to the pre-op room. They stuck the IVs in me, gave me some antibiotics before surgery because I had had staff before, and they were being extra cautious again, trying to make sure that no infections happened. And then I, they asked me if I wanted anxiety medicine, and I said, oh, my gosh, yes, like, give me the meds now. <laughs> and whenever that med hit, let me tell you, I just was in a whole new world. It changed my life. It made me not nervous at all. I remember saying, I feel so hammered. And then that's all I remember. Literally don't remember being rolled back to the operating room. Nothing. I just woke up after surgery in the ICU. In the ICU room, I remember vaguely waking up on and off. I had a morphine button, so every time I had some sort of pain, I just pressed the button and it made me sleep, man. Like, or it just made me super drugged. I don't really know. But I do remember being rolled out of ICU the next day, and the lady didn't know how to drive my bed. She was, like, pulling me. I was hitting walls. It was actually insane. But I made it down safely to the recovery room. And in there, I do remember being in lots of pain. But, again, had the morphine button for a few days, so that was nice. And I could just press it. My mom told me that whenever I'd be, like, annoyed with people or wanted them to be quiet, I'd point the morphine at them and go, Wee! And then I would think it'd make him be quiet, but actually it just made me fall asleep. Um, so the next, the day after surgery, they make you sit, which was something that I just was completely shocked about because whenever I did sit, it felt like something was like almost stabbing into my back, which is completely normal. I mean, I have two rods in my spine. It's going to hurt. I, a lot of people say they get nauseous when it happened. I didn't get nauseous, luckily, but... I'm also someone that doesn't like throwing up and will literally just ignore the fact if I do feel nauseous. Or I'd be like, medicine, medicine, I feel nauseous. So they give me some nausea medicine. Um, and then I remember walking for the first time. That was painful too, but it was just the baby steps and the little milestones that I'd be so happy about. Like, I knew I wasn't paralyzed, which, thank the good Lord above, that was another one of my big concerns. Even though it's a low percentage, you still have that fear. And... Um, it's just something that I'm just so grateful didn't happen to me. And then about five days later, yeah, five days later, went home. So I was in the hospital from Monday to Friday, which is normal. And I don't remember the car ride home, which is, again, kind of concerning, but also very good. The medicines worked well, I guess. And really the main rehab I did was just sitting and walking. I made myself get up and walk all the time because I didn't, I knew that was one of the keys to recovery and it just had to do it. It was a frustrating process, I will say, because you do, you have to have patience. You can't get up by yourself at first. You can't go to the bathroom by yourself. Like it is, it's hard. It's almost like you're a little baby again. Your parents have to wake up in the middle of the night and flip your sides because you can't roll over by yourself. And it's sad. You, I had no appetite at all. Like, literally none. If someone mentioned food, I just wanted to throw up. I almost didn't even have the energy to eat. I think one of the main things in my recovery that I really tried to focus on, though, even though I wasn't very patient, was being positive and thankful that things like that I got to do this surgery because I knew in a few weeks I was going to be feeling so much better. Um, about two weeks after surgery, I ended up getting out of the house and went on my first outing. It was obviously shopping went to Dick's Sporting Goods. I lasted about 10 minutes, and I was like, Mom, I have got to go home. I am in pain, but it was a good step, you know? Like, I was up longer than I had been in so long. So then we went home, and each day got a little bit better. I did have a couple mental breakdowns about just being scared I'd never be the same again, wouldn't be able to be back to my physical activity level that I wanted to be, um, would be stiff because I couldn't move much the first couple weeks. I just... I don't know, you don't know what to expect. The fear of the unknown scares me. And it wasn't necessarily the pain that made me cry, even though it was painful. It was more the fact that I'm just not patient. And I think it was three weeks was the big turning point for me. I had my friends come down to, I think it was about three weeks actually, after 
my surgery and I had a blast with them. I got to sit through a movie. I went to dinner. That was for sure my biggest outing. I was very sore after that weekend though. So maybe recommend not going quite as fast as I did, but I'm competitive. I like to be out and about. I don't like sitting in a house all day. To the doctor one month after, they were so happy with everything I was doing, my recovery. They said that the spines looked good. My x-rays showed great. Um, so that was very comforting. I was more, and I also got allowed to twist and bend more, which was very nice. Um, cause I didn't have to like stand still the whole time, like roll up and be like, mm, mm, you know, two weeks later I had to go back to OU. I was nervous for it, but I was excited cause my pain was definitely drifting off and I was just ready to be back with my friends, doing the things I love, get back into school into routine, have responsibilities again. I was ready to be my own person again. Love my home, but you know how it is. Whenever you're used to like living away and then you go home for that long. Yeah. <laughs> Love you, mom and dad. <laughs> uh, so now I'm three months post-op. Actually, four months. Wow. Four months post-op about. And I can't believe where I am. Like, I'm working out every day. I'm doing stairs. I started lifting weights again. I'm starting to get my muscle back, which makes me super happy. Um, I'm just in complete shock about the whole situation. I never in a million years imagined I'd be where I am four months post-op. And I just really thank God for that every single day because I just, I'm not even in pain anymore. It's like before I didn't even realize how much pain I was in until after surgery because I used to not be able to sit for more than an, like 30 minutes probably without stretching my back because it felt like it was just compacting and it was going to almost snap in half. I used to be able to grind my rib with my hip. That was not fun. I used to like have issues breathing. That's another fun fact. My heart was starting to get very deformed like because of my spine twisting and stuff, which is normal and it also affects your breathing. And I just never realized these things because I was trying to put them in the back of my head. But now that I'm pain-free and can breathe normal and my heart's not deformed, um, I just am so happy. Like, I love not being in pain. I'm excited to see what the future holds. And I really hope this video helps out anyone that needed a little positive encouragement about scoliosis. Let me know if y'all have any questions.